100 years ago, Einstein came up with a loophole that would allow light to be seen as both a wave and a particle at the same time. His opponent, Niels Bohr, insisted that Einstein's vision could never be realized in practice because observing one aspect instantly conceals the other. Today we have a way to test this. If this loophole works, one of the principles of quantum mechanics will have to be rewritten. If not, then the debate between Einstein and Bohr is settled forever. Now, more than a century later, new research from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, may finally put to end the discussion. Moreover, we'll discuss how the results of this experiment not only clarify the nature of wave-particle duality, but also open the door to a new generation of quantum technologies. Our story begins more than two centuries ago when Thomas Young passed light through two slits, expecting to see two bright spots as if light were made of particles. Instead, the light formed a series of bright and dark bands like ripples overlapping in a pond, showing that light acts like a wave. A century later, experiments also showed that light can act as particles. So what's the catch? Whenever someone tried to observe which slit a particle of light passed through, the stripes disappeared, and light acted as separate particles striking the screen. It seemed that simply observing the trajectory destroyed the wave pattern, an early hint that the process of measurement influences quantum reality. This astonishing paradox sparked lively debates. The most famous one took place in 1927 at the Solvay Conference between Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr. Einstein proposed a clever thought experiment. Imagine the two slits as tiny objects able to move as if they were mounted on springs. If a photon passed through one slit, it would push it ever so slightly like a bird rustling leaves as it flies past. Einstein suggested that measuring this tiny recoil could reveal which slit the photon went through, demonstrating its particle nature. While the screen would still display a series of bands, the interference pattern, proving its wave nature. In other words, Einstein hoped to catch light showing both particle and wave properties at the same time. Bohr was not convinced. He responded by invoking Werner Heisenberg's newly formulated uncertainty principle. Bohr argued that any attempt to determine the trajectory of the photon by measuring the slit's recoil would inevitably disturb the system so much that the interference pattern would be destroyed. In accordance with quantum mechanics, it is impossible to measure certain pairs of properties precisely at the same time, such as position and momentum trajectory and interference phase. Trying to obtain path information inevitably washes out the wave interference. Bohr essentially said that one must choose to observe one aspect of reality or the other, but not both simultaneously. This friendly clash reflected the growing strangeness of quantum mechanics. For decades, their argument remained unresolved, experimentally speaking. Throughout the 20th century, many versions of the double-slit experiment were carried out with photons, electrons, and even large molecules. They all supported Bohr's view. Whenever path information is obtained, interference patterns disappear. Yet Einstein's thought experiment, the possibility of capturing the dual nature of light in a single setup, remained an intriguing hypothetical challenge. It took nearly a hundred years and advanced quantum technologies for anyone to truly put the idea to the test. Now in the 21st century, physicists have tools that earlier generations could only dream of. In 2025, a team at MIT finally performed an idealized version of the double slit experiment designed to answer this very question. As one of the researchers, Wolfgang Ketterle remarked, Einstein and Bohr would have never thought that this is possible to perform such an experiment with single atoms and single photons. Let's look at how they did it. 
and what they discovered. Physicists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology decided to completely rethink the double slit experiment. Instead of metal plates with slits, they use far smaller objects, individual atoms. Each atom acted as a tiny slit, something that a particle of light could interact with. In fact, they use more than 10,000 atoms arranged in a crystal-like grid known as an optical lattice. This lattice of atoms was prepared in a special state where each lattice site held exactly one atom isolated from its neighbors. The atoms chosen for this experiment were a mixture of lithium-7 and dysprosium-162, two elements with very different properties. By running the experiment with both types of atoms, the researchers ensured that their results were not tied to a specific material. All of the atoms were cooled to just a few microkelvins, temperatures barely above absolute zero. At ultra-low temperatures, each atom's motion is minimized and it can be controlled using quantum mechanics. To create the slits, the team used an array of laser beams as optical traps. You can imagine these lasers as tiny springs of light holding each atom in place. By adjusting the intensity of the laser, they could strengthen or weaken the hold on each atom. Everything was now ready for the photon's journey. The researchers directed an extremely weak laser beam tuned so that on average only one photon at a time would scatter from the atoms. Each photon's task was similar to Young's original setup. It interacted with two neighboring atoms in the lattice, just as it interacted with two slits in the classical experiment. As Ketterly explained, what we have done can be regarded as a new variant of the double slit experiment. These single atoms are like the smallest slits you could possibly build. Each photon could interact with either atom, or technically with both in the superposition as it passed through. By using single photons and single isolated atoms, the experiment was reduced to the very essence of quantum physics without unnecessary noise or complications. This became a true laboratory realization of Einstein's thought experiment. It's important to note the team ensured that each atom scattered no more than one photon during the experiment. This meant that the photon's wavefront was essentially divided between two atoms and could interfere with itself, as in Young's original double-slit scenario. At the same time, Having thousands of identical atom pairs allowed the scientists at MIT to repeat the scattering of a single photon many times and build up a detectable pattern on their camera. The genius of this approach was that it provided a clean and precise way to observe either a wave-like interference pattern or a particle-like scattering depending on the conditions without relying on large slits or bulky detectors that could introduce uncertainty. The MIT found that the key factor was how tightly the atom was held in place. When the atoms were firmly fixed, they stayed still and photons interfered like waves. But when the atoms were held loosely, they shifted under impact, recording the photon's trajectory. The moment this path information appeared, the interference vanished and light behaved like particles. As the scientists explain, the more loosely an atom is held, the fuzzier or more spatially extensive it appears. The fuzzier the atom, the more easily it rustles and records the path of the photon. In practical terms, increasing the atom's fuzziness made it more likely the photon would behave like a particle, since the atom was more likely to reveal the path. Reducing the fuzziness by holding the atom more tightly made it more likely that the photon would behave like a wave, since neither atom could reveal it had been struck. The team even fine-tuned the confinement to find a sweet spot, a point where about half of the photons behave like waves and half particles. At this balance, the contrast of the interference pattern dropped to 50% exactly matching quantum theory's prediction when the probability of obtaining path information is 
This continuous control highlighted Bohr's long-standing principle. There is a trade-off between knowledge of the photon's path and the visibility of interference, a spectrum governed by the uncertainty principle. Once their system was working, the MIT team immediately set out to implement Einstein's 1927 proposal. You may recall that Einstein imagined each slit as if it were mounted on a spring so that a passing photon would jolt the slit and reveal its trajectory. The question was, could this mechanical recoil, the spring effect, bypass the uncertainty principle and show both wave and particle behavior? Or would Bohr's prediction hold true with interference washing out whenever the path was known? In the MIT setup, the laser traps holding atoms acted like Einstein springs. A tightly focused trap was like a stiff spring and a weak trap like a loose spring. And initially, the atoms were confined. As we already mentioned, a weak trap allowed the photon to impart noticeable recoil, capturing path information and destroying interference. But the researchers went even further. They wanted to test whether the spring itself was fundamentally necessary for the usual trade-off or whether only quantum uncertainty was at work. So they effectively removed the spring. In practice, they prepared atoms in a certain state and then at the critical moment, completely switched off the laser traps, setting the atoms free for a brief moment not held by anything. It was like fully compressing a spring and then letting it go. The measurement was taken within a fraction of a second after the traps were turned off, while the photon scattered before gravity or any other force could significantly move the atoms. At that instant, the atoms were no longer bound to any spring. Nothing external held them in place. If Einstein had been right, this freedom might have revealed both wave-like and particle-like behavior at once, but the result, it was decisive. The spring itself did not matter. What mattered was whether the atom recorded the photon's path. Whenever that information was present, interference disappeared, and so the two natures could never be observed together. The recoil itself, the literal vibration of the slit or atom did not provide any magical way to reveal both natures of the photon. It was quantum uncertainty, the fuzziness of the atom's position, that dictated the result at every stage. By removing the trap and seeing no change in the fundamental behavior, the MIT experiment definitely disproved Einstein's idea of a loophole in theory. Bohr's interpretation, backed by Heisenberg's principles, prevail. Any gain in knowledge of the path comes at the cost of wave interference, period. What's truly fascinating is why the spring did not matter. In quantum terms, when a photon scatters from an atom, the two become entangled. If the atom's state changes, for example, if it moves or bounces into a different momentum state, that entanglement carries path information, and the photon's own state loses coherence, meaning no interference. In the experiment, when the atoms were initially well localized, for instance, held in a deep trap or effectively in a rigid lattice, the scattering of the photon was essentially elastic, with no recoil transferred to any specific atom. Instead, the recoil was absorbed by the entire crystal lattice, in that case, the photon remained coherent and produced clear interference fringes. But as soon as the atoms were free or loosely confined, any recoil revealed the photon's path and reduced the coherence of the light. In this way, Einstein's idea of catching the photon in both states at once was thwarted by quantum entanglement at every step. This achievement is not just an elegant demonstration, but a landmark moment for quantum physics. First, it provides direct experimental confirmation of the principle of complementarity and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in the context of wave-particle duality. By realizing an ideal double-slit scenario with single photon and essentially a single pair of atom slits, 
the team eliminated ambiguity and loopholes. The result was crystal clear. Nature behaves exactly as quantum theory predicts, even at the scale of one particle in one atom. This is a satisfying conclusion to the famous debate between Einstein and Bohr and final proof a century later that Bohr's argument was correct. Beyond settling a historical dispute, the experiment demonstrates a powerful new method for quantum research. Using a Mott insulator lattice of ultra-cold atoms as quantum slits is a new technique. This means scientists now have a platform for highly precise exploration of all kinds of quantum phenomena. For instance, researchers can place atoms in different quantum states, even put the atoms themselves into superposition, existing in two places at once, to test how that affects the scattering of light. In fact, the MIT team is already considering follow-up experiments with more complex configurations perhaps using atoms in deliberate superposition states or overlapping and interacting wave packets of two atoms to see new forms of interference and entanglement. Each atom in the lattice could even be entangled with its neighbors, opening the door to modeling and visualizing entanglement in a strikingly clear way. Another intriguing direction is the concept of the quantum eraser. Since the setup can control whether path information is preserved or erased, it's perfectly suited for such experiments. The team could, for instance, allow a photon to scatter and then adjust or measure the atomic state in a way that effectively erases the path information, leading to the reappearance of interference. Such experiments would shed further light on how information and measurement shape reality, essentially rewriting the observer's knowledge without changing the original event. And finally, there's symbolic meaning as well. The year 2025 was declared the International Year of Quantum Science and Technology, marking a century since the birth of quantum mechanics. It is fitting that this is the year scientists resolve one of the earliest and most famous disputes in quantum theory. And yet, will we ever find a way around the uncertainty principle? Could there be some yet unknown loophole or new theory that lets us see quantum objects in their full dual nature at once? We only know that the universe often prepares surprises for us, and only by observing carefully, intelligently, and sometimes with completely new eyes can we discover them. This story is not just a lesson that Einstein was wrong in one of his ideas. It's a reminder that in science, even the greatest minds face the mysteries of nature and that the answers, when we do find them, can forever change our understanding of reality. <laughs>